hello and welcome everyone so in this video we're going to continue from where we left off and just start working on our guest attribute set so open this up and you want to open this guest attribute set header file first okay so first thing to do is start by adding my header file just above this generative line add this ability system component dot h header file next what I'm going to do is define this macro so it's easy to implement some of our functions inside of our attribute set class so I'm going to define this attribute accessor macro okay and next what I'm going to do is forward declare a structure and create our delegate for handling on attribute change okay so this is done next what I want to do is under the public scope just below this line I'm going to add these functions and attributes so I'll just start the explanation one by one so this is our constructor think of this like the construction script inside of the blueprints so this is called the very first thing that is called when this thing is placed in the world okay like even before this is placed in the world Mm. you'll have to check it yourself I am not sure yeah so this is a function to call the replication on the attributes that are present on this attribute set okay get lifetime replicated props okay and next we're going to define our attributes so the way you define these is this is special struct called fgameplay attribute data and this is more than just float values so you have to use this type of uh, data type to define these attributes and then we call our macro to create these getter function the setter function then initial functions automatically okay we just simply call this and all of these functions will be created okay and next we have our attributes for our max health okay and similarly we have defined this max health now the reason we are doing this health and max health is that as of yet I haven't found a way to initialize both of the health max and minimum values inside of a single uh, attribute but in the future they might support this feature so for now I'm just using this max health to clamp the value of the health between 0 and max health okay similarly we have an attribute for mana okay and also for max mana so max mana is also being used to clamp the value of this mana between 0 and this max mana value and next we also have this base attack damage value so we can um, just multiply and divide something with this and just apply damage to the other target actor okay and similarly I have this speed multiplier value for our attribute now the reason I'm using speed multiplier instead of directly using a speed variable is that I want to apply buff and debuff to my speed so it's easier to manage for me in terms of a multiplier value rather than just directly modifying the value of speed inside of the character okay so we have these attribute change delegates that we have defined inside of our header file over here this one so is going to take an attribute and the stack count value of that attribute so I've declared the one for health, mana, base attack damage and speed multiplier. Now I haven't declared any delegates for change of max health and max mana. I didn't really need them for this project. You can do these for these attributes as well if you wanted to. But just remember that if you declare them over here, you also have to declare them inside of your character file like this. Okay. And then we have this post claim pay effect execute. So this function is always called whenever one of these attributes has been affected by a gameplay effect and you want to do something like final cleanup or the clamping of the values you can do that those things over here okay and then we have these replicated functions that are being called when whenever our attributes changes and then propagate those changes over the network okay so we have these functions for each of our attributes over here and this is the um, end of the header file now going to our 
cpp file by pressing the shortcut ctrl k ctrl o ok and inside of it i'm going to first start by um, adding my header files so you need these header files and then what i'm going to do is just create an empty constructor what you could do also over here is um, initialize your attributes over here but i'm not going to be doing these over here Rather, I'm going to be doing them inside of my engine itself and using a data table. So if you wanted to, you could slice these over here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is just define and declare all of the functions that I declared inside of the header file. So we have our post gameplay effect execute function. I'm calling the super function of the parent class. And then if I check if the attribute that I have changed is health or its mana or its base attack damage or its speed multiplier. So for health what I'm doing is just clamping the value between 0 and the maximum health value and then just transmitting that change to my attribute change delegate handler. If you see this one, um, this one health change delegate. Okay, so it's broadcasting that and the stack count on that delegate. Okay, similarly for mana for base attack damage change and my speed multiplier okay so in this function what we are doing is notifying our replication that our attribute has changed so these variables condition none so you can replicate when certain conditions are met but for the example in this series what I'm doing is I don't want any condition and I also want to always replicate my attributes okay so for network animation, you might want to change these variables, but for the tutorial sake, I'm going to always replicate all of these attributes. Okay, this is done. And these functions are also needed for replication. We are just calling that rep notify function of the gameplay attribute. So I'm done this for health, max health, mana, max mana, similarly for base attack damage and speed multiplier. So this file is also done. And in the next file video, we're going to just tackle one more file for our target actor. And then I promise, um, not a promise, but yeah, I think we'll move to blueprints after this next video. Okay, so this is it for this video. Thank you very much.